Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in our previous video we were looking at Power Automate and how to create a, an automated flow so that every time an email was received you'd be able to store that or the attachments from that email into a SharePoint document library. What I'm going to do is just continue on from where we left off. Uh, just had a couple of questions about this, were well, all valid points, but also I wanted to cover off this element of adding uh, some logic or a condition into this um, for your scenario. So what we've got at the moment, and if you haven't seen the previous video, you might want to go and watch that now, else I'm sure you can probably keep up. We've got our flow here, and we can see that we've got this current apply to each attachment. And basically all it's gonna do at the moment is regardless of what the attachment is, it's going to save it into our SharePoint document library, what we've also got open here. What I want to do is add in some condition or add a condition in here, which first tests what the name of the attachment is. So for us, we're working with a staff upload. So we, we only really want to capture an attachment called staff upload from the email. If there was other attachments attached to that, we don't want to save those. So this is why we're adding this condition in here to ensure that the others are filtered out and we only save the one we're after. So what we're gonna do again, like I say, following on from where we left off, uh, we're gonna first, uh, well, this might seem a bit of a reverse order, but hopefully it'll make sense of while keeping this and we'll delete this bit out later on. What I'm gonna do first is add an action. And that action is going to be a condition, which for us has fortunately been up at the top of the list already. But you could search in the search box to find it if you don't. And when it pops up, you'll see you've got this condition box here and also the if yes and if no. So basically, if we'll add a condition in here. And if that condition is true, obviously it will do the yes on the left side, else it will fo continue following this no option over here. So what I want to do first is I'm going to go into here and I'm going to say okay the first thing I want to do is I want to do a test on attachments name so attachments name here is the same as the attachments name we're using here in the file name so this is going to be the file name of each attachment so is equal to and I'm only interested if it's called staff upload dot csv so if that's if that condition is met then what we'll do is we'll do this step so I've left this open just for a cheat sheet for me to uh, uh, quickly about to enter it back in. So we'll go add an action here and we know this is going to be called create file. And we're looking for obviously the SharePoint option. So we just need to select our SharePoint site. The folder path for us, if we click this folder icon, is going to be in test archive and daily email. So we want that folder. And then when it comes to the name of the file, all I'm gonna literally do is cheat sheet and copy everything from here. So the first thing we want is a attachments name, which I can scroll down and find here. Uh, attachments name. And obviously the content of the file is gonna be, again, the original attachment content. So we can see we've got that option available to us here as well. And all I just need to do is add this little dynamic text we've got in here. Uh, there are ways that you can do this so that, um, you can do this in a condition and then you're able to reference it in each element, what I'll cover in another video. But for today, we're gonna to be sticking with our, not to call it lazy, but yeah, maybe our messy solution. So I'll take that, go back into here to the start and we'll go into add some dynamic content. If it's gonna let me, ah, there we go, expression. I'm literally gonna paste it in there. And I want this to be at the beginning. So the easiest way to do that apparently is to re-add attachments name in here. And just for reference, what we're doing is we always want to retain the attachments name, but we're just putting this date stamp at the beginning of it with an underscore so that as multiple days go on, you have a date stamp as it's called, so you know which what each day refers to. It just helps to keep everything tidy. So now that we've requ um, requested, um, replicated this element back down here, I can now delete this. If I was to run this at the moment, what would happen is it would create a, or save a file for each attachment. It would then do the logic and then maybe either duplicate it or obviously if it wasn't met, um, not do it. So I've got it down here. So let's just delete this one now. Yeah, we definitely want to delete. And now we can see a bit more about what's going to happen. So when an email comes in, what it would, well, just to be a bit more detailed, as we know, there's a bit of criteria here. We're only looking at emails if the subject filter uh, has daily attachment. And then if that is the case, what it's going to do to every attachment in that email, regardless if it's only one attachment or maybe 10, it will loop through each of those attachments. And that's being done here by apply to each. 
and it's then going to apply that this condition. It will say, right, is the attachment name equal to staff upload? If it is, it will save it in our designated folder. If it's not, then at the moment it's not going to do anything because we haven't defined it to do anything here at all. So happy with all that. We'll now go down and click save. And once it's happy, yeah, we just now need to test it. So we'll go back into our test option here, into manual, and go test. So we're now in our inbox just to send ourselves a dummy a dummy email so that the workflow will uh, will test it to make sure it's working. So just send an email to myself. Um, I've got to make sure I've got the correct uh, subject line in here, which for us is a daily attachment. And then I'm going to put some attachments. So for this example, I've got three different attachments. One is staff upload, which we want to capture. And then we've got a couple of other um, plug ones. So one called uh, not staff upload and another one called staff upload dash copy. They've uploaded. So let's hit send and we shall see what happens. So yeah, we can see the email has been received. So let's go back into our flow for a second. So this should now acknowledge that obviously an email has been received into that inbox and then trigger uh, the flow that we have uh, associated for that, which should hopefully only just take a couple of seconds. And there we go, we can see it's worked. We've got our green ticks against each section to show that it has run, and obviously the useful information here to show uh, the duration it's taken. Uh, I guess the main reason, I'd, or more important side look at this, if we were used to it being two seconds and suddenly it's gone up to 10 seconds, that obviously indicates where you might want to uh, maybe improve your workflow to obviously save a bit of time. But nonetheless, it's all just useful information. And then if we go into our SharePoint, we can see in our daily email folder, we have got our staff upload attachment and we can see it's today's date. So we've got the 25th of August here and our staff upload. And this is the only file that's been uploaded. So those other two file names, because they didn't meet the criteria, they have been excluded from uh, obviously being saved. Um, you might have noticed that or remembered that one of those files was called staff upload dash copy. So you can change your logic so that it uh, it says when it contains rather than when it's exact. So I think I could probably show you that. So yeah, if we go into our condition, you can see at the moment it's attachment has to equal this entirely. We could change that and say, oh, we only, we're only interested if it contains, so as long as it contains the word staff upload somewhere, that would work. Um, but obviously for us to be specific, we've put it is equal to staff upload. What you could do here, and what and probably is a good sort of way of working if you're dealing with this, is you could create another sort of catch all uh, section here. So for us, let's say, let me just go quickly create a new folder over in here. So you go new folder and we'll call this maybe other. And then I'm also going to just delete this file out here. So we sort of start from a blank canvas as such. Okay, so what we could do here, let's add an action into no. And we're going to do create file. And the site address is going to be the same. Uh, the folder path is going to be slightly different. So let's go test archive, daily email. And this time I'm going to select other. And then I'm going to copy everything else into here again, very much the same. So again, I'm being very lazy here and just going to copy out this uh, concatenation I've got. And uh, go dynamic content. And then I'm going to use uh, attachments name. And then this last one's going to be attachment content. So what we've done there is ever so slightly updated, but it's maybe a good way uh, of working um, just to, uh, as a catch-all for any of attachments. So all this remains the same in the sense that if the attachment name is equal to staff upload.csv, then great, it's going to carry on and it's going to um, save our target attachment to our given location. However, if there's other attachments on that email, maybe later down the line it's decided that another attachment is going to be included as well as, or maybe it could be any number of reasons. I'm really just trying to make some up on top of my head. But if there is another attachment on this email that's, that isn't a staff upload, what it's going to happen now is it will say, well, no, this condition is not meant, met. But what I want to do is capture that attachment in an other folder, which we defined here. So we'll just save that. And we'll also test this new updated flow as well, just to see how that's working. So we'll go into test, manually go test. 
and likely it's now instructing us to go back to our email and get another uh, dummy email made. So once again, we'll send this to myself and we'll call it uh, daily, or oh, sorry, mixing my words. The subject obviously has to be daily attachment. Uh, I think I mentioned in the previous video that you don't have to do filter just based on subject. You could run this on every email that is received from a certain inbox or person, uh, and then obviously apply con um, uh, criteria to that. But daily attachment for the purpose of this example is just a lot easier for me to do. So I'm gonna just drag our free attachments back into here again to run our test. They seem like they're uploaded. Let's send that email. Perfect, that's now come through. Let's go back into edit your workflow. We can see our little uh, loading icon is here. So we'll just let that run its course uh, and obviously execute the flow and see what it does with our attachments. Perfect, we can see it's now done. Uh, obviously this, uh, this, is, this section has taken a bit longer. You may remember it was previously two seconds, but it's now four seconds. That obviously we don't want to take longer than needed, but it's a good indication that obviously it took a bit longer because it's now applying logic to those additional two files. So one thing to bear in mind, the more attachments on an email, obviously the longer this flow is going to take to run. But if we now go to our SharePoint site, we can now see that as expected, as we had previously, it saved our staff upload file dated today into our daily email. However, additionally now, if we go into our other folder, you'll see we've got those other two files also stored in there, um, just so we've got them for reference should we need to, uh, or should we want to catch them for whatever reason. Uh, I've obviously put the date stamp on there for them as well. Again, just good practice so we can identify when those files were received, uh, but obviously, depending on what your criteria is, you may or may not need to do that. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you found it useful and maybe even answered uh, one of your questions you had around uh, a Power Automate uh, flow. Uh, if it did, please don't forget to give this video a like and not only greatly appreciate by myself, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm. And also if this is your first time maybe finding one of the videos or you've watched uh, videos before, again, please can I ask you to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be uh, notified of all of our future videos as they come out and of course as always if you have any questions about the content of this video do just drop a comment below this video and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.